God is calling the church together, and there's a call to holy living. Can you say amen? There's a call. God's calling out the church. This is it, folks. This is it. This is the last hour. This is not fun and games or just, oh, this is just a moment of when we feel good to go to church. God is calling the church to be ready because Jesus Christ is coming soon. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12, as Peter writes, they were told that their message were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news, and this good news is Jesus, has been announced to you by those who preach in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. And I am your pastor and glad to be so today. But this morning I am just a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ under the unctioning of the Holy Spirit out of heaven to share the words that I'm going to share today into your spirit and into your life. It is all, it is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. Oh, church, the angels are rejoicing today. Heaven is shaking today. The world is moving and turning upside down. At the worst time of history of America in the economic and the financial status of life, there is a movement of revival among our God's people. Can somebody say amen? At the worst time of history of our economic situation, that there is an outpouring of God's spirit because God's people are hunger for more of what this world does not have but what the spirit has. Is. Father, Lord, today I pray, God, the words I speak will not be words of flesh, but rather of the Spirit. As Peter understands your word, as he puts it to a word on a paper and writes down the word of God, he understood firsthand as he firsthand experienced. And God is a, the 21st century in the year of 2023 as their pastor, God. I come with like experiences, God, of your power and your anointing and your presence by living a holy life and a call to holiness in the house of God today. And I pray, God, today let every man and every woman, every young person, every grandparent hear the word of God and be subject to that word, that their word, that your word would change every part of our life. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. give the Lord a shout of praise as you be seated this morning. Amen. The presence of the Lord is here. Can somebody say Amen. To be a holy church. Can you say amen? Now, as I read to you in verse 12, I just want to go over real quickly as our text this morning. And I'll be just going scripture verse by verse through this chapter today. It says that they told that their message were not for themselves but for you. And it was not just for the Jews, it was for the Gentile. If you don't know anything about that, that means you and I today. This word is for us and that the good news is coming, and that was Jesus Christ. And how many know Jesus came as a babe in a manger? He walked upon the face of the earth and healed many people and preached the truth. And, and he died a sacrificial death on the cross for our sins. He died for a purpose. He rose from the grave three days later and ascended in the clouds of glory. And this same Jesus is coming back for the church. Can you say amen? amen? That's the good news I want to bring to you today. And so in order for understanding Scripture and you understanding what is taking place around the world and in America today, I just want to jump into the scripture with both feet this morning and just move on to Peter's writing of the when God gave him the words to write. And that's found in verse 13. So these are the words of Peter. Now remember Peter what he went through. Peter saw all these things we talked about earlier in the last several weeks. Now, now Peter has come to the place he's writing to the church and he says this. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. 
He's speaking to the church. He's not speaking to the world today. He's speaking to the church, the bride of Christ. He's speaking to God's people. He must we prepare our minds. I want to tell you something. Though that we feel the presence of God very strongly in this place today, and we're seeing evidence and manifestation of the Spirit around you, the devil is not going to sit back on his hands and say, well, just go ahead and have a good time. The devil has sent a warfare, and he's sent out the demonic spirits to try to destroy the move of God. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Can you say amen? But I want you to know, get your mind ready. This is not easy living. This is not easy street. To take your shoes off, so to speak, pop it up on the couch and say, well, I'm going to heaven. There is a battle raging and you got to be prepared for what the devil is doing in the church. You got to come up armed up and ready to fight. Can you say amen? and exercise self-control. It isn't the time to allow your tongue get out of control today. It isn't the time to get your life out of control. Get your life shaped up. Now, I want you to know what God is doing in the last days. You don't want to hear this. I know it, but I'm going to tell you the truth today. And that is God is sending us to boot camp, getting ready. It's ready. Now, boot camp, for those who have fought in our service, I want to say thank you for your service and thank you for your surrendering your life for those years that you gave. But you will tell me after service, boot camp is not fun. Boot camp is not easy. Boot camp is good to go eat some pizza and sit on the couch and just wait and say, well, I'm a part of the service. I'm part of the military. There is a lot of work involved and a lot of heartache involved. A lot of things when you don't like, you can go another step. You're going on because your drill sergeant said you're going to go and you got to do it. There are things in your life spiritually today that you don't feel like you can do or make your way. But I'm here to tell you, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and say, I am in the army of God. I'm going on no matter what I've got to go through, I'm going to do it. Can somebody say amen with me? I need you to preach with me this morning. I want you to know it's time to have self-control in your life. It's not saying, well, I might, might, I want to do it this way. I want, it's time to line up to the Word of God and say, I'm going to follow the Word of God to the letter, and I'm going to do what God tells me to do because there's a battle we fight, and I want to get to heaven. Can somebody say amen? So prepare your mind for action. And exercise self-control and put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Now, I know he's already been revealed to the world, but I want you to know he's coming again. Can you say, man? The world not seeing what we're about to see. Can you say, man? So here's what I want to tell the church this morning. Listen to me. Because the devil is trying to get your mind off the things of God and get your mind in the things of the world. By listening to all the stuff that we have to listen to through the news outlets and news media, through your friends and family, the newspaper, that which is on your phone, on Facebook, there's nothing but negativism happening in the world today. There's nothing but hatred happening to you. And we think we're all hope of our finances are going down. What are we going to put our hope in? I'm going to put my hope in the gracious salvation of Jesus Christ. That's where I put my hope in. That my friend, I I hope that things get better on this earth, but I'm not, my hope is here is not worrying about it. My hope lies on the other side. I know it's better on the other side. Can you say, man? And so don't get all bent out of shape because this po politician's doing that or this Republican or Democrat party is doing that. Get your mind and eyes set on fixing on things above and not beneath. Oh, I'm talking to somebody this morning because we got all sidetracked. That's exactly what the devil does. If I can be honest with you, turn the TV off, quit looking at Facebook so much, get the word of God out and say, greater is he that is me than he that is in the world. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I got victory this morning because Jesus is my Savior. And I'm here to tell you today, get your mind ready. Get your mind wrapped around this thing. Get your heart set in tune with the things that's happening and happening in the world today. And that is Jesus is coming. In verse 14, it goes on to say, is Peter writing? Remember who Peter is, what he's going through. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. 
He's talking first-handed here. Peter had done that once. He went, you know, someone told me, I, I experience is the best teacher. And I tell people, no, not necessarily true. They look at you like you're crazy. Why would I have to experience something when I don't have to experience when I just listen to what the Lord has done in other people's lives, follow what God's word says and do, and I want to experience some of that stuff. A prime example, my wife and I will go to a restaurant sometimes, and we'll get something to drink, and it, it, don't, it tastes a little funny to her. She says, you know, you need to try it, taste it. It don't taste good. I said, why would I want to try and taste it? You just told me it don't taste good. Why do I need to try it when you say already it don't taste good? I let's just send it back and get some. Oh, but no, no, you got to taste it for yourself. Then you got I don't know. I don't. I don't want to put that stuff in my mouth, drink that stuff, put that in my stomach. Why would I want to? And if I'm smart enough not to do it over a glass of iced tea, I should be smart enough to do it in other things, the spiritual life. When I see other people go through heartache and they got messed up, I ought to just learn from their mistakes and say, Lord, I'm not going to do that in my life. And Peter knew firsthand because he'd done a lot of those things that we talked about going back to the old ways. Why would I want to do that when I see what happened to Peter and why God had brought Peter out? I don't want to go through that. So you must live a God's obedient, as obedient children. You must live as God's obedient children. Obedience is better than sacrifice, the Word of God tells us. Oh, people says, I've given this to God, I've done this to God, I've done this to God. But the one thing you've not done is given your heart to the Lord. You not obey God fully, and you're just saying, well, I've done this, I've supported the church. I've done. What God wants is not just that. He wants all of your life. He wants you to become an obedient child. In the last days, in the hour that we live in, God is calling the church to a holy lifestyle. He's calling us to a holy, a holy living. And I want you to know this morning, the enemy was trying to slip that up in your life to get you off track. And he will try to make you go back the old way. Do you remember when you was not a Christian? Do you remember the things, the way life really was in your life? The devil paints all, well, you could have this and you have that. But how many knows if it's so good and so wonderful, why is all the Hollywood stars committing suicide? What people that think they got their act together committing suicide and getting admitted in the hospital, mental wars, because they can't take the pressures of life. There's peace that passeth all understanding. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory following Jesus. And so I'm here to tell you, the enemy will try to get you slip back in your old way to satisfy your own desires. But here's one thing about it. If you give up your desires, if you sacrifice your life every day, if you crucify the flesh every day, your desires become his desires. And he says, I will give you the desires of your heart. When it's lined up me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And some movie star got found out about that and made a show or made a movie called The Bucket List. You know, what is your bucket list today? I'm not talking about the natural of just, you know, having this. Having, I'm talking about what is your really desires in life to do? What is your desire? God says, I'll give you all the desires of your heart if you come obedient with me. The devil, the problem with the devil's deal he don't have the tools, he don't have the ability to do that, but God does. He created all things and made all things. So God can fulfill that which he promises and devil cannot. And so I'm here to tell you today, you must live as God's obedient children. And you got, don't slip back to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better before, but you know it today because this preacher's telling you. In verse 15, but now, but now listen. You must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose. Because I am holy. Can somebody say amen? You must be holy because I am holy. He didn't say you should try to be holy. You should be holy. He says, but you must be holy. You see, today, holiness is a way of life. Now, I, I, I was born and raised many years ago in, in the Pentecostal movement. And I remember when I was a young man, the rules and regulations they had. I mean, men could not have this stuff on their face. And men had to go on a platform, you had to have long sleeves on your, on your thing today. You have a tie on. And, and women, you better have those dresses all the way down the, 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 the bottom here. You, just have, you know, I'm not talking about legislating holiness as a way of a dress. I'm talking about holiness as a way of life. 
Holiness is, is a way of living. You see today, I just want you to stop and pause for one moment and reflect about your own personal, not your husbands, your wives, your children, reflect on life. The places that you went this past week from last Sunday to this Sunday. Do you think if um, Jesus was here on earth that he would really want to go to those places that you went to? Or maybe the things you look back in your conversation you took place in the last week. Maybe on Facebook. Do you think Jesus is well pleased at what you put out on your Facebook pages? Well, I didn't actually write it, I reposted. But some of that stuff that's reposted is not even worth reading, more or less reposting. Are you with me this morning? You see, I'm talking about being holy before, that people will see the problem with the world today, they can't tell a Christian apart from themselves. Because the world, it looks like the church, and the church looks like the world. And so when the world really needs help, they don't know where to go because it's just a bunch of people. But when the church stands out and says, man, we know how to pray. We know how to seek the face of God. Our life may not be the same way your life, but we love you. We want you to fellowship. But when a need is meet, we know how to get a hold of God. And this morning, I'm here to tell you the truth today. God's not looking for a church that's all messed up and broken up. He's looking for a bride that's ready. He's ready for ready. Now, I want you to know as I walk down three of my daughters down the aisle and, and we made the, the exchange and all that, I, I want you to know something happened when we lease that as a father into someone's hand. Something to give away. Now, I want you to know I think that my daughters are the most beautiful daughters in the world. And fathers, you better think the same thing about your children, all right? But I want to tell you this this morning. It may not cost us uh, extra amount of a lot of money, but it was the most beautiful wedding. I want you to know God is getting the church ready for our re- wedding and reception like you've never seen before. Everything's done. You know, there is the time of the engagement when you get engaged and you start planning a wedding. And my granddaughter actually did that this past week. Her, her fiancé, her boyfriend, posed to her on her birthday and they got engaged. Now there is a stage of planning a wedding. And the Lord willing, if he would tarry, there's going to come a wedding in the near future. Now I want you to know, just because you got engaged doesn't mean you're married. Are you with me this morning? All right. There has to be a ceremony. And today uh, we got engaged and we gave our heart to Jesus, but the ceremony is about to come. My friend, we've not done it yet. God, we're, we're going to walk that aisle spiritually in a twinkle of an eye, and we're going to sit at the feet of the Lord, and we're going to come together in unity in heaven above, and we're going to have a wedding feast like you never imagined today. It ain't came yet, but it's coming. It's on the way. You see, after an engagement, there is a date to be set, to be set for the day that friends and family people will come into a chapel or some place and they will have a wedding ceremony. I don't know the date of the Lord's calling us together. I don't have the time to tell you this is the moment that Jesus is returning. But the date is already set. Are you listening to me? The date is already set. Jesus is coming some glorious day to take his bride away. I'm here to tell you that date is set. And so as a bride, as marching three beautiful women down the aisle, they was ready. They had their outfit on. They had their, their dress and their gown on. They had the veil on, whatever they did. I want you to know today, uh, I've got to be ready for when the sound comes, I'm going to walk down that aisle spiritually and I'm going to go to heaven as the bride of Christ. Can somebody say amen? And so in order to do that, I can't do it my way, but I can do it. got to do it God's way. In verse 17, as Peter writes the word of God down for us, and remember, and remember, listen to the word of God, and remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. Now, we've got to remember this. Because some of our siblings will tease you and say, well, daddy, I'm daddy's favorite. I'm mama's favorite. Now, when I go home and I visit my parents and my sisters come around, I will tell them that I am my parents' favorite. Just to aggravate them just a little bit. 
knowing and realizing that's not accurate or true. And we're being recorded so people will know that this, this is going to happen, all right? I'm confessing I know that's not true. But my Father has no favor. He loves us all, can you say amen? If this is true and you believe this, then don't get mad when pastors get blessed of God because I'm walking obedient way to God. Don't get all bent out of shape when God begins to bless me. Say, oh, how come God's not blessing me like that? It's because maybe you're not walking the way you need to be walking. Maybe you're not going the way you need to be going. And as if you'll do that, God says, I will bless you. I will pour out my blessing upon you because you're an obedient child. I'm here to tell you today, church, God is no favorite. He is come, and whatever you do, he is going to judge. If it's good or bad, it's going to be judged. I'm here to tell you not just when I get to heaven, but I'll tell you what today, he's looking today, and God wants to prosper those who will serve him and bless him. He wants to bless you abundantly if you follow God's way. But if you choose not to follow, don't complain about not getting blessed of God. Don't sit there and complain about the church. Don't complain about, because God says I am no favor to anybody. I care about everyone. If you'll do it my way, I will bless you. You do it your way, you bless yourself. It's very simple. It's very simple. I learned, and I'm learning by Peter's life, I'm going to do it God's way. I've made a step sometimes. I've made some bad decisions. But I thank God that I've learned from my mistakes and said, God, I want to do it your way from now on, not my way. I want to do it your way because God will bless us and reward us for what we do. He says, so you must live in reverence and fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. Now, people don't want to, I don't understand this part of Scripture towards people. I don't understand people in taking the Scripture. Because people think they're going to live forever on here on this earth. They think, well, I'm going to live for here for another thousand years. My friend, you are not going to live a thousand years on this earth like it is today. You are going to come back, if you're a child of God, come back to an earth, a new earth, and you're going to reign for a thousand years then. But you're not going to set up your household right here and then expect to live for a long time. It's a drop in a bucket. You know, uh, if you live to be 110, 120 years of age, and we think that's a long time, it's a drop of bucket compared to eternity. It's a drop in the bucket. It's like taking just a little drop out of the ocean and think the ocean's going to miss it. Okay, that's eternity. It's just going on forever. And so this is temporary residency. You don't really have, you're just a pilgrim passing through this land. You just, you just, you know, you may be paying taxes on your house. Maybe you may own your house, and that's good and well, and praise the Lord. But this is still temporary for you. Because when the time of your departure here, you're going to pass from this life or another life, either by the way of the grave or the rapture of the church, if you're a child of God. And so this morning, I want you to know, understanding that my eyes are fixed above and not here. I believe God has blessed us here, and I thank God for his blessing right here in the state of Michigan, our household, our family, our church, and I give God all the praise for that. But I want you to know the day, as my wife said, for years and years ago, and I think you, she's mentioned it here, my children's told you, it's all going to burn. It's all going to go away. And what you've done for the Lord is going to last. Whatever you do for the kingdom of God. And so I hear the word investment all the time in the world that we live in. Invest in this. Invest in that. I've heard people say you need to invest financially in this way in this product and you'll make you some money. I've heard people say you need to invest in your family, your grandkids, and rightly so. More than they want to talk about is investing in the kingdom of God. You see, I believe when you invest in the kingdom of God, things will change in for your life. And so if I talk about investment, here's what I want to share with you. If you live to be 100 years of age, and we don't know you are or not, but we just say if you do for math, for those who don't know math very well, if you live to be 100 years and you invest your life and you dedicate your life to service to God, then when you come back to this earth and again for a thousand year reign, that's 10 times that amount you're going to be blessed with. You think about this. I am not investing in the stock market. I'm not investing in this program. That program. You may do it, that's fine, whatever. I, I'm saying I'm investing in the kingdom of God because when I come back to the rule, I don't know what I'm going to be. He says some are going to be king, some are going to be this and that. I have no idea what, what God said, but what I do now determines what my future is going to be for a thousand years. Think about this. I'm investing for a thousand year reign. 
I'm investing now. See, an investment, you don't wake up one day at 65 or 70 years and say, okay, I'm going to start investing my finances for, to get, get money. It don't work that way in the natural. Are you with me this morning? You got to start investing when you was younger to get that brought up there. Now, I'm here to tell you today, spiritually, you can start investing today. You don't need to say, well, I'm already old in life, gotten older in life. I, 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 it's okay. You can start investing today. I believe that what I'm about to say is accurate. What I believe to say is very true. And I believe what I say is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe if you will follow Jesus with all your heart, I believe when you get to heaven, your reward will be just as good as a Billy Graham's. Because God didn't call you to be a Billy Graham. He called you to be who you are. And if you'll be obedient to what God called you to be, your reward will be just as great as Billy Graham. Though you not preach to a billions of people, your life will touch and your life does matter. Can you say amen? So remember that. Invest in the kingdom of God. In verse 18, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from your empty life and you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver with lost their value. It is the precious blood of Christ and the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Can somebody say, man, my, de- my sin is paid. My debt is free. Not because I've done this or that or said this or did this. It's because of what Jesus did. And I've accepted him as my Savior. His blood washes my sins away. Now, the devil will try to re- remind you of your failures, your sin, your disappointments of life in the past. And I've said this before, but I want to say this again. When I was real young in Christ, and I was just, a, uh, just starting in the ministry, I'll never forget, forget a conversation with God. Now, see, when you have an encounter with God, I've said this a thousand times, I'll keep saying it, it changes your life. You know, people say, well, the Lord said this, and their life don't ever change. I question, did the Lord even say anything? Because when the Lord speaks... Something happens in your spirit. And so the Lord shared something with me one time many, many years ago. And and I said, Lord, I'm sorry I failed you. I did this thing again. And 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 I'll be honest with you, I don't even remember what this thing was. But I I kept doing the same thing over and over. And I said, Lord, I'm trying my best. I'm so sorry. This is, you know, the, the fourth time, the fifth time, whatever I said. I can't remember that I've said this to you, Lord. And that God spoke to my spirit right then and there and says, I have no recollection. I have no written things written down. I don't never seen you do this ever before. And I said, what? 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 The devil has been telling me that God's not going to answer my prayer because I messed up too many times. And you're telling me you have no record of ever doing this? He said, that's what forgiveness is all about. This is what my son came to do for you. This is, this is the forgiveness that I'm talking about. We forgive one another, and then every opportunity we get a chance, we'll try to get back at him. That's not forgiveness, my friend. Forgiveness is totally what God does. Forgives us of all of our sin. And he takes our sin and throws it as far as the east is from the west. And so I'm here to tell you this morning, church, God is a merciful, loving God. If we'll go by the book, by the word of God, I want you to know that God will do great and mighty things. Can you say amen? 